Hey, <laughs> you guys are not gonna believe what just happened. I had this whole thing set up to do a live call. Actually, no, I'll show you. This is pretty. And everything fell apart, like something must have lost balance. And look at my floor. Like my whole computer screen fell, it's cracked. I don't know if you can see that, it's cracked. And look at my floor. <laughs> oh, that's what holds my little tripod thing. It's, it scared the crap out of me. Anyway, I'll clean it up after this call. The show must go on, right? Isn't that the saying? Anyway, Neil's gonna have a conniption fit when he comes home and sees all this broken glass and glass beads all over the floor and my computer broken. Anyway, <laughs> the show must go on. Hi, Julie, good to see you. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, this is probably gonna be about 12 minutes because I've got eight points and I'm gonna cover each of the points very quickly. But really my intentions are to cover eight things that I think get in our head a lot. And I am completely guilty as well. Sometimes I'm frozen with fear and doubt and thinking, you know, if I'm having a bad day or a bad week or something in my life has happened and sometimes it just, my mental thoughts can completely paralyze me. But what it takes is changing those mental thoughts around and looking at it differently so that you can take that challenge and get through it and plug forward. So I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I think through when I get in my own way. So the very first one is self-doubt, right? We think, man, like, can I really do this? People are gonna judge me. I have fear of X, Y, and Z. And I think when it comes to fear, Really, who are you afraid to fail in front of? Because honestly, you can't give a crap what other people think if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, if you're gonna do this business and you want a better life for you and your family, you cannot give a crap what other people think. Not even the people that you love and care about. You just, it, it can't matter. Oh, hang on, now this isn't working. My goodness. Ah. This was just a disaster, I tell you what. Hang on, guys, Ugh. before I slip on broken glass. It's the first that this has ever happened. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, we're back in business. All right. <laughs> so, unless these people are gonna fix your situation or fix your life for you, their opinions, guys, don't really matter. And you've gotta just push through that. And I think through that sometimes for me, if I think, oh, this person's gonna judge me or that person's gonna judge me, if they're not fixing my problem, then they can't judge me for how I'm coming up with my solution. And that's really how I think about it. Hey, how you doing? Okay, so, and know that risk and fear, actually there's a billionaire that lives in our neighborhood and he said this to me the other day and I loved it. He says, risk and fear is a personality trait. It's a choice and everyone's somewhere on the spectrum. You know, you can have someone jump on a motorcycle and not think twice about it, but then you have someone else do brain surgery, which would scare the crap out of me and they feel competent in it. Risk and fear is a personality trait and it's a choice. So any kind of fear you may have or fear of taking a risk in this business, you can undo and think differently and just look at it differently because it is, it is absolutely a choice. So let go of your fear, trust the process, um, trust the ideas that you have, because God would not have given you ideas and a vision and put you in this business, business if it wasn't for you to use it and do something with it. So trust the process. Number two, oh, it's my son. Um, I'm not a good leader and I have nothing to offer. So things may, paralyze you because you're like, I'm inviting people to a business and then I'm gonna have to lead them and I may have never led before or what if I'm a crappy leader and then they're gonna judge me and I, I don't wanna deal with that. Know that the number of successful people in this business that are coach orphans is astounding. Lindsay Matway is one of them. She came into this business with no working upline. And you go into these leader groups and you ask who of you that have made a substantial, made six figures in this business or whatever has had an upline and so many of them did not. So what this means for you is at the end of the day, if somebody wants something badly enough, they're gonna find a way. So anything that you do for them is icing on the cake. 
it's extra. So, and especially with a, like a traditional job, when we owned our car lot, we didn't have an upline mentor saying, hey, this is how you need to buy your cars, this is how you need to run your business. We had to figure it out on our own. And so look at this business, not as your duty or your obligation, but that anything you give to somebody, if they're the right person and they wanna do this business, they will find a way. I think we beat ourselves up and like put too much pressure on ourselves that their destiny is in our hands, and it's not. Um, here's the other thing, is leadership is subjective. And I, this is something I've had to learn in this business. Um, what one person may define as an amazing leader, someone else is gonna turn and say, you're a crappy leader. It's truly subjective because <laughs> it's all based on individual needs. Some people may have way more emotional needs on your team and another person may have way more just tell me what to do and business needs. And your own God-given strengths aren't gonna meet the needs of everybody. So know that leadership is subjective and give yourself permission just to do the best that you can every single day. And I'll tell you, I am always refining my leadership. I'm always trying to figure out ways that I can be better. It is absolutely a journey, guys. It's not a destination. And so don't fear the mindset that you're not a good enough leader for somebody and not invite them into this business because you are and you're exactly where you should be and you will always continue growing. And you know what, you're not gonna be everything to anybody anyway, so just do the best that you can. All right, number three, what if I can't make someone successful? Then it's gonna be my fault. Errant. Right? Especially as women, we're so into like self-guilt that we never can do enough for somebody. Guilt is a choice. Guilt is a feeling that you think about and choose to take on for yourself. And you know, think about with children. You could grow up in, look at Lindsay Matway for another example. You could grow up in a horrible childhood with no guidance, no leadership, and turn out amazing. Or you could be in a relate, you could grow up with the most amazing childhood, like some of these celebrity kids, want for nothing and turn out to be a jerk. So it's not so much that it's your job to make someone successful. You can give them the tools, but it's what they do with the opportunities that they have. And truly, everybody will ultimately get what they want. What does that mean? If you truly want something, you can go get it. So don't be fearful that it's your job or your duty to make somebody successful because if someone truly wants something, if I want to be a $5 million earner, I can go get it. If I want to live homeless, I can go do that too. We are all exactly where we have chosen to be right now. And it's your job to manage you and lead you and lead the way for other people. It's not your duty or your responsibility to make someone successful that doesn't want to be. Okay, so release that. Just you do you and do the best you possible. Number four, doubt about this business. I don't know if this business is sustainable. What if I invite somebody into Beachbody and then Beachbody fails? I don't wanna be responsible for that. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this. There is no business on this planet that comes with a promise or a guarantee. The people that work for Enron thought that was safe. People doing real estate before the bubble burst thought that that was safe. No business is safe, okay? Neither is marriage. We go into marriage anyway. Kids, no guarantee they're, they're not gonna be jerks. <laughs> we have kids anyway. We do the best we can with the tools we have. And it, remember, this business, like any business, it is about the journey. It is not about the destination of where you're getting. So think about worst case scenario, worst case, Let's say Beachbody goes away in two years, and I hope this like eliminates your fear and just pushes this aside. Worst case scenario, one, someone joins your business today, two years from now they've paid off all their debt. Beachbody closes down, they walk away debt free because the money that they've earned has given them the opportunity to pay off their debts in two years. 
Number two, they walk away from this business two years from now when Beachbody closes its doors, hypothetically, what's the worst that's gonna happen? They're forever changed in the way they think. And they no longer think about it being an employee and being on that treadmill day in and day out until they're 65 years old. Now they think differently because they've been through Beachbody, they've been through this business, and it's forever opened their eyes on what's possible for them. So worst case scenario, if this business goes away and you don't invite them to it, they will have never had that opportunity to think differently. Number three, assuming Beachbody goes away in two years, the amount of people that they will have networked with and helped and met through Beachbody in this Beachbody culture, people in this group, they will have never met any of those people. So if Beachbody were to go away in two years, worst case scenario, they've met a bunch of amazing people that think like-minded and think bigger the way they do now. And number four, they have now learned new skill sets that they can take into another business. So if one of your fears is you don't want to invite people to the Beachbody coaching opportunity because what if Beachbody goes away and you don't want to be responsible for that, think about everything that they will get in that journey that's going to refine their lives so much more socially, financially, and just mentally and how they think what's bigger and better for them that they will be able to take now to another business. So I want you to get rid of that fear of inviting people because you, you fear that Beachbody, something's gonna happen or something like that. No business has a guarantee. So damn it, get on the ride and freaking go and run as fast as you can while you can because you, there's so much opportunity here to be had and we can't just walk the way out of fear. All right, here's a spiritual gut check. Nothing we do in life or have done is by accident. So if Beachbody were to go away in six months, two years, 10 years from now, there are lessons in absolutely every human experience that we have, even ones that seem the most significant. And so invite as many people to this opportunity because I guarantee they will be better off one year, two years, 10 years from now, period. So get over that. Everything in life happens for a reason. It's what we do with it and how we manifest it. Number five, fear of abundance, doubt that there's just not enough people out there. Okay, one of the things that I hear is, Everybody that I'm talking to already has a coach or they're already part of another MLM. Really? Really? <laughs> Think about that. Okay. It may seem that way because you're friends with a lot of Beachbody people or like the groups and Facebook algorithms are showing you things that are more MLM-like, so your feed may seem like it's, it's full in that regard. Because if you create a custom list of people that you're targeting, they're the Facebook feed looks very different. They don't talk about MLMs. They're talking about how crappy their life is and how they want change and they're just sharing videos of other things and there's like, there's not much inspiration in the general news feed if you remove the beach body stuff that you see. The other thing I would say is if you're finding that everybody you're talking to is already in an MLM or in, a, in beach body or they have a coach already, go fish in a different freaking pond. If I'm deep sea fishing and I'm pulling up grouper after grouper after grouper and I don't want grouper, I'm going to go inland and go freshwater fishing somewhere else. So if where you're fishing, you continually are finding people that are already coaches or already tied to something, think out of the box and go look somewhere else. Find different groups. Go do some face-to-face -face stuff. I guarantee there are tons of people out there, but you're staying in your comfort zone, so you're seeing the same movie over and over and over again. So here's some tips for that. Reinvent your brand and reinvent your cold market because your cold market is just repeating itself. So think about these answers. Who needs what you have? Write that down. Who needs the products that I have? 
And what do you have that is unique? Write that down. And what do you have that others don't, both in products and in personality and in brand? Because once you know that, now you know what, go, what pond to go fish in to find the people to build your team. Because there's a ton of people out there that need what we have. Why? Obesity is an all-time high. Household financial debt is at an all-time high. We fit both the bills. Here's the other thing. You think about hamburger shops, Subway, skincare. That is like hugely abundant. But yet you still see Subways opening up. You still see hamburger shops opening, opening up everywhere. What we have is truly unique, is truly different. And it's mobile, which is the way of the future. And we have a heartbeat behind what we do. There are so many people out there that need what we have. If you're coming across the same people over and over and over, go find a different pond to fish in, period. Number six, what if I don't have any success to share yet? Okay, I'm gonna tell you this. If you don't feel like you have any success to share yet, get over your idea of what success is. What does that mean? All right. So success to me may mean very different than success to Lindsay or Bonnie or some of my brand new coaches. It could be very different. We all have heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Who knows what's at the bottom? Food, safety, shelter is at the bottom. Somebody that doesn't have any of those and then has it, that's freaking success to them. But if you have that, and maybe you're higher up on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and you're more towards self-fulfillment, that might be your success you're striving to. So when you think in your mind, I don't have success to share, that's bullshit. Get rid of your definition of success, because what success may mean to you is going to be very different to somebody who is at the very bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And this business can help those people all the way up through those needs. And so if you're thinking you can only speak to what your needs are, you've got to get rid of that and speak to everybody that has different needs all along their journey. Think of, um, you know, you've heard just like with weight loss, people are like, well, I'm not at my goal weight. I can't post pictures. Well, you might not be at your success goal either, but it's always about the journey. People don't tune in to The Biggest Loser at the very end. They watch the entire show because they love to see the process unfold. They love to see the struggle. It's the same thing if you watch The Apprentice. If I watched the very last season of The Apprentice and saw them win the challenge, I'm like, well, what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything to me. It's watching how they figure things out, how they build a team, how they work through different things. That is success it's progress forward using your mind and showing people what's possible that you can work through things that is success and you can share that from day one as a coach number seven people are too busy or they're not interested in building a business bullcrap they're not interested in building a business in what they think about with network marketing what does that mean because yes, they are interested in building a business and having a different life and having better for themselves. And they're tired of being in financial despair or in a situation they can't get out of. You, we as coaches, we just have to become better at figuring out what their pain points are. That's it. Because you know what? People will go to great, to and through great lengths they will do whatever it takes to survive a marriage, to survive an illness, to survive a financial crisis. They will go through great lengths. So when you are saying people don't want to do a business, they don't have time, they can't be bothered with it, it's bull crap because those same people will go back to school for another two to four years, six years, and accrue more debt. Those are the same people that will, won't think twice about getting a night job and working and never seeing their family. So one of our biggest jobs as a coach, as coaches, one of our jobs, one of the main jobs 
is to retrain people's, people's brains and how they think and process getting to that next level, getting out of what they are in. Because people have traditional ways of solving problems. Just go be more of an employee. It's our job to retrain them if they're in a struggle and we know their pain point, how this is the best solution for them. Number eight, last one. This one's more of a statement, but I looked through a lot of profiles in the past few days and just looking at people's pages and why would I want to come to someone's page? People, look at this mess. <laughs> Brandon, don't come over here. People need to feel the vibe of your page and ask yourself, what is the vibe of my page? Is it happy? Is it exciting? Does it put a smile on people's faces? For me, the vibe I want to create, I want to make people think differently. They come to my page, in general, I want them to think a little bit differently than they did the day before. Think differently about business. Think differently about the, what they put in their body. That's kind of the vibe that I want. And I do that through, I want them to feel happy. I want them to feel empowered. I want them to see me as real and raw and that I'm going to be completely honest with them. And I've gone through some of the pages and they feel heavy. They feel really heavy. Then, and, and some of like, uh, why would people want to come to your page if it feels just heavy and down? And I've been to some pages that feel kind of like vanilla. Like, so what? Y'all need to take more risks. You need to put yourself out there. Put your brand out there. Put your vibe out there. Because people are not going to be inspired by a vanilla page. So social attraction, if you're building your business on social media, is everything. Sharing opinions is good. Probably not political ones, <laughs> but sharing opinions is good. It shows you have a brain and share why you feel the way you do. That is okay. What value can you offer people? Put it out there. Because nobody wants a vanilla page. No one's gonna be attracted to just a so what kind of page. And you know what? Share your story. Trust the process. Like I said earlier, God has given you every single experience in your life to do something with it. Share it. Inspire people. Show how them you got through situations because every experience has been given to you as a gift. And you can pay that gift forward to other people on social media. But remember, risk is a choice. It's a personality trait. Risk taking is a personality trait, but you can undo what you have learned and put yourself out there more to inspire more people, to attract more people, and absolutely believe in these thoughts that I have shared with you today to get past these self-limiting beliefs on why you're not inviting people and talking to people and pulling them into this business. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> get out of your mental blocks and flip the switch in how you view challenges and go give people freaking hope that this business can do, whether it's for six months, six years, or 60 years. It doesn't matter because I guarantee their lives will be changed and they will be better no matter what because of you inviting them into this business. So thank you for t tuning in. Shay Stanford, Refining Lives, one day at a time. Take care, guys.